All right, welcome back. Uh, let's just look at Kennedy's question. Uh, Kennedy, I, I, I didn't understand your first question. As a pastor, how do you handle this yes, yes leaders in the board membership or leadership team? Uh, I don't understand what is this yes, yes leaders. Uh, can you elaborate, please? Of Kennedy's there. Uh, Kennedy, you're there? Okay. Uh, all right. What makes the second part of your question is what makes an average or above average leader? Okay. Uh, let me answer the second part of the question. Uh, hopefully, Kennedy will explain uh, open clarity of the first part. Uh, what makes an average or an above average leader? Now, yeah, I'm just going to give you some practical insights. Right? It's not like we are you know, above average or being great. Or, uh, but we're all growing. We're all a work in progress. We all go through uh, uh, these challenges. We all go through ups and downs as leaders. So. Uh, when we talk about average leaders, it, it all deals with our uh, a couple of things. One is our intimacy with God, right? Uh, our levels of intimacy with God. Two is our attitude or our approach towards the things of God or the things of the Spirit, right? And of course, there may be many others. So one is our intimacy with God. Now, now we know that true ministry is birthed out of the intimacy or anointing of the Holy Spirit. So uh, the more we spend time, there's more intimacy with God, there's more sacrifice, there's more you know, uh, time that we spend with God. It will almost immediately reflect in the ministry, right? So as leaders, right? Now, of course, you know, uh, you know, once we get into the ministry, uh, or you know, we just new in ministry, we can't expect somebody to you know, uh, be a great leader initially itself, right? If it does happen, it's wonderful, right? That's wonderful that God does that. Uh, but one is to continually grow in our intimacy with God. Now, the best example would be Apostle Paul. He's come towards the end of his life, and he's saying, "Hey, uh, I, I I forget what is behind, and I press on." for that for which God has taken hold of me, right? So he's, he's not saying I'm satisfied with the intimacy that I have with God. Now, the Apostle Paul had enough and more intimacy with the Lord Jesus, right? He just was there. He, you know, he had this such a close relationship with God. And, uh, but he says, no, I'm pressing on for what God has taken hold of me. He's not relying on the previous revelations, the previous work that God did in his life, but he's saying, pressing on for the things of God right so uh, uh, so I would say the first one is our time spent in God's presence really matters and that will reflect in our ministry if you are able to spend time more time in God's word more time in his presence praying seeking God that is where you know uh, the, you know God is the source of all wisdom also right so that out of that time with the Lord, when the ministry is birthed out, right? Uh, 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 God gives us wisdom as a leader to take the right step, to do the right thing, and we will see this over time. Right? We will see. Uh, uh, so I would say number one, as much as possible. If we want to be above average leaders, if we want to be great leaders. Yes, the practical is there, but true ministry is birthed out of intimacy with God. So never, uh, you know, compensate that time with the Lord for the work of the ministry, because it should be an overflow of that. What was the what was the you know uh, uh, reason for the Apostle Paul's success? You see consistency in his ministry for 30 years. Consistent. 
same desire, same passion. If not, the passion has gone more and more. Why? Because of his time with the Lord. In the book of, I think it's Ephesians, he says, I bow my knee to the Father and I pray for each one of you. In the Corinthians, he says, I thank God I pray uh, in the Spirit more than any of you. I speak in tongues more than any of you. So it shows that his 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 that intimacy with God, the time with God, knowing God, drawing from his presence, will really reflect him in his history. Now uh, I want to share this example, right? Uh, and it's something that I personally have experienced. There'll be times we have to lead worship. Right, uh, maybe church, you know, prayers, fasting prayers. And I've noticed this. The more I spend time in God's presence, say God, bless the songs, anoint the songs, let there be a, a, a move of your Holy Spirit. And I, the more we spend time in His presence, you know, the outcome is very simple. We see it. So this one. So we see the outcome. Right? Uh, so the more I, the more we, anybody, you know, not only me, but something that I have experienced, the more I spend time in God's presence. Many times, you know, uh, in the time of worship, you, you just feel liberated. Just feel the power, the presence of God. And, you know, going through that one hour of worship is a breeze. But there are times I may not have spent time with the Lord. Maybe because, you know, working, tired, weary, you know, just finished work, and then we have to you know, spend many times, right? Uh, may, may not have spent it. I, I find it difficult to finish that hour of worship or, or what to do, or, you know, you just feel this feeling of uh, oh, uh, uh, you know, dissatisfaction. It didn't go as I planned. Uh, uh, so, yes, uh, I believe that. Uh, we spend time in God's presence, it will reflect in every area. People will recognize it. People will know, people will recognize it. That's the thing, right? Uh, we may feel that how do they know that we spend time on the on spend time? They will know. They will know it will show in the way we are in our leadership, in the way we are. Uh, it just reflects. I remember Moses, you know. He spent time in God's presence. He came down. He said, "Cover your face. There's too much of glory on your face. The glory of God is upon your face. Cover your face. We can't see it. Why? Right? Because he was in God's presence. Right? The more we are in God's presence, the greater is our ministry. The greater is the wisdom that God gives us. The greater is our leadership. That's one. Two is uh, our attitude towards situations and things that we see. Our attitude matters. Imagine we spend hours in God's presence." We're good leaders, but our attitude is not right. Say no, 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 they they are not good. Or maybe it's just pride. Maybe it is jealousy. Hey, look up, that ministry has thousands of people. I'm still in hundreds. Now, jealousy can creep in. All these things are hard attitudes which we must guard ourselves against. Right? Uh, so I, I of course there are many other but these are two things that i personally like spend time in god's presence and guard your heart attitude now kennedy i'm not sure if uh, uh you can exp uh, if you're there can you explain okay uh, i'm not really sure does anyone know what is this yes yes uh, this or oh, i don't know if it's a type typo uh can you type it out uh so I, th I think what he just means is someone who just agrees to anything, someone who is a man pleaser, man pleaser. I think oh. if I'm if I'm getting Charles' question right, that just goes with anything that everybody says without a um, without taking informed decision and going with his conviction just because he wants to please everyone. He doesn't want to hurt the feelings of anyone. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much, Dave. For some clarity. If if uh, Kennedy, if that is your question, uh, yeah, correct. As he said, yes. Okay. So very important. Uh, 
we are not here to please man, but we are here to please God. Now, if there are people in, in ministry who only say yes, 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 but they don't do anything about it, uh, it's important that we ask them to, you know, you take time with them. Don't give them leadership immediately, right? Uh, because again, as we talked about it, right, uh, uh, as leaders, our hard attitude matters. Our, uh, uh, you know, uh, whether we are glorifying God, whether we are honoring God, whether God, uh, you know, uh, we have a heart for God, that should be there, right? And, and if, if they want to become members of the church, they are free to do that. But when it comes to leadership, and we have people like this, we take some time. And we take time, we work with them, but you never, we never uh, write them off. I say, okay, this person will only talk, but he doesn't do anything. No, right? you never know what they can become. Uh, you know, there are some of them who are, are willing to take correction and they work on it. Right? But there are some who take correction, they say, okay, and they don't do anything about it. And then there's the other uh, group of people who take correction and they say, no, I will not change. So uh, so we need to be aware of these three things. And uh, even as we work with them, uh, if, they are in, if they are already in leadership, uh, then you, you, know, you need to be Kind of stern with them let them know that hey what you're doing is going to be impacting other people's lives you give them opportunities and if you feel that uh, over time there's no uh you know the feedback given has not been worked on you know you can ask them to take a break uh, but do this all lovingly correct and love uh but be there for them right uh, when you take ask them to take a break don't just say okay just attend church but be there help them to get back on their feet, help them to get back that place of leadership that they are in. But, um, you know, if they are pleasing men and you feel that that's something that is, uh, you know, going to cause a problem for the sake of the ministry, for the sake of the team, uh, you may have to ask them initially to step down, uh, but you work with them and then help them to be restored back to their position. Right. Christopher says, you please share how you build intimacy with God on a daily basis and how it has evolved over the years. Okay. Uh, I'll just share for just a couple of minutes. Yeah, so Christopher, uh, you know, when I first joined, uh, you know, just became a believer, just like everybody else, right? It was just like you know, I tried to pray. I really wanted to fast and pray and all of it. But, you know, uh, I, I prayed and I thought it was one hour, but I opened my eyes. It was just 10 minutes. I thought, oh man, how will I? How am I going to pray for an hour? Um, it, it was just too difficult, and so I liked worship. So you know, I tried to build on that. Uh, over time, I began to understand how the Holy Spirit works, right? And how we have the Holy Spirit, how the Holy Spirit, uh, you know, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, and how we can flow in the gifts of the Holy Spirit over time, right? Uh, and of uh, speaking in tongues. So initially, for me, it was very, uh, I felt it very, you know, I, I'm being honest, and, uh, you know, because I, I felt it very weird initially, right? So I was like, what is this? Uh, but over time, uh, and I knew I, that that was not me who was speaking, it was, it was God that was there inside speaking. And uh, began to pray in tongues. So slowly it became, you know, I remember it became, uh, half an hour. This one time it was half an hour. And I was so happy. Hey, man, half an hour. I was able to spend time in God's presence. And I and I also experienced the presence of God. I was able to, uh, you know, just receive from Him. Uh, and, uh, of course, reading the Word, uh, you know, just spending a lot of time studying the Word. Uh, you know, when I was in Bible college, uh, two year course that I took way back. Uh, you know, I, I spent a lot of time reading and preparing myself in times of, uh, I knew the word is something, if I have to preach the word, I have to learn. Well, so uh, basically, you know, just went, dived into the word. Uh, of course, there was, it was two years where, you know, there was no other commitments. I had to only, you know, I just concentrated on Bible college. But I understand that, you know, all of us may be working, we have things to look after. So, what you what I did was I set times right morning and evening, uh, and I tried to uh, 
you know, stick to those timings. Um, and then when it came to reading the word, I tried to do a lot of research and uh, hear from God, listen to a lot of so basically, Christopher, I think all of us are doing this, nothing new. Uh, uh, you know, it's not like I started off and then there was started off with one hour prayer. No, it all started very small. But then when we have a heart for God, when we have this desire to grow, nothing can stop us. And, you know, so over the years, I realized that, hey, you know, you know uh, after I graduated Bible college, I, uh, I began to just spend a little more time. Because that is when I realized, oh, man, uh, it's no more Bible college. It's now I'm ministering to people. So this this weight of this feeling of oh, it was a wonderful feeling because uh, I'll be teaching and preaching, but the responsibility was so much. So it, it just added on, and I was able to you know, I, uh, spend more time in reading and reading other books and all of that. So uh, again, made a lot of mistakes, Christopher. I made a lot of mistakes in many places where you know uh, made big mistakes, small mistakes. But it is the grace of God that. Uh, you know, over the years that I uh, that I'm learning and uh, was able to de develop myself, and of course, being with wonderful leaders who have given me these opportunities is always uh, such a blessing. So, um, so Christopher, just, just look what everyone is doing. Yeah, nothing new. Uh, start small. Start with what you have. Uh, start with what you know, and build on that. So, just making sure your foundation is strong. That's it. Okay. All right. Uh, let's go to our notes. We'll just do a little more and then maybe we can close. Yeah. Okay. Okay. The leader as a course. So maybe we'll do this chapter. Get stop. The leader as a coach. Now, I'm sure all of us have heard this word coach, right? Coaching, uh, coaching centers. And, uh, you know, nowadays we have these coaching centers, especially when you look at all the, uh, for, for school children. Uh, but now things have changed. You have coaching centers for public speaking, for all kinds of things, right? But why coach people? There are three uh, points here. You build a stronger team. You enable people to rise to new levels and new challenges, and you begin to attract people who desire to be coached. You build a stronger team, right? and when we have a team, uh, the, you know, it is powerful. Right? The importance of a team is very, very powerful. Uh, you can enable people to rise to new levels, new challenges, uh, and then you begin to attract people who will want to be coached. And so. Uh, I, I do know that many churches, many ministries already have, uh, let's say, maybe mentors or coaching leaders. Uh, uh, they already have it, uh, and that's something that we also at ABC we are uh, we are talking about it, uh, starting starting like you know, uh, mentors just to help each other. Uh, that's something that's on the cards, but uh, oh, because we because what, the thing is we have a lot of life groups, so we get people connected there. But we do realize that we have to take it one step further in in, in having this close uh, coaching, right? Coaching is a process of equipping people with tools, knowledge, and opportunities they need to develop themselves and become more effective. Right? So. Coaches don't develop people, they equip people to develop themselves. Oh, what a wonderful thing that is. Coaches don't develop people. They help people or they equip people to develop themselves. Here's what you have to do. You do A, B, C, D, these four points, try and follow them, try and do this, and we'll come back and we'll see how you were able to, you know, uh, be able to do this. Right? So I remember, uh, I, you know, when I began to preach, um, I would always tell people, please give me feedback. Because if I don't get feedback, everyone say, oh, good, good, then, uh, you know, I won't be able to grow. Right? So, uh, uh, so I would, uh, you know, I would tell our team, and I will just give me feedback, whatever it is. It may be something very small. Uh, why? Because uh, it helps us. 
And when we have coaches, uh, they tell us what to do. They equip us to fulfill the role that we are either that we either want to do or we are already doing. Right. So if you are a coach now, as a leader, cell group leader, you can take it that you're a leader and a coach. You're both. Right. Uh, you have both the attributes uh, mixed, and uh, it's both. Uh, you'll have to do both of them. And some things to consider when you are coaching: work one on one. Uh, take advantage of coachable or teachable moments. Right. Uh, and guide people to learn for themselves. Uh, teach them how to extract the right lessons from their experiences, how to find others who can assist them, how to obtain feedback and information. So, for example, you are coaching another person and you know that this person is going to be, uh, start their own life group. So you tell them, hey, uh, why don't you, uh, you know, why don't you start a, uh, you know, doing a word study on this book, on this chapter? Uh, you know, and, or do a character study on these three people. This is the, uh, you know, the commentary that you can use. This is the other books that you can refer to. Uh, this is how I did a word study. So maybe you can use that uh, as a as a backup, as a reference point, and and you know you can just uh, get them to learn that, right? get them to do it, and see whether they've been able to do it and how they've been able to do it. Right? You don't have to do it for them, but what you're doing is you're assisting them, uh, and then you're you're giving them the material that they need, the encouragement that they need, and finally you give them some feedback, right? uh, good, positive, and uh, feedbacks on where they can improve. Orchestrate resources and opportunities. Not only equip people to learn, but intervene with others on their behalf. Uh, Right, so so there will be times, especially this happens in church, right? Where uh, you know church members they come, uh, it's it's common, right? They come to the pastor for prayer. Oh, uh, well, what we started doing was we started getting the our life group leaders. So we would announce as pastors, we would announce, hey, uh, our life group leaders are here, uh, and they'll be available to pray for you. And pray for your needs. So now, what's happening? Uh, we are giving them an opportunity to step out. We're giving them an opportunity, maybe on a Sunday service or maybe on any of the weekends, any any anywhere. We're giving them an opportunity to step out, right? And you are standing on their behalf. You're saying, "Hey, they are there. They're available." Right now, for them, it may be a new experience. It may be a new door. They don't know how to do it, but you're putting them. The spot, say, go ahead, do it. Uh, as leaders, you're encouraging them, right? Uh, you're not teaching them to pray, fathers, but they are stepping out and doing it. So you're you're, you're just there backing them up, right? Uh, here are some of the uh, coaching strategies. Uh, again, some of it may be uh, repeated or replicated in terms of uh, you know uh, making a cell member to a cell leader. First one, forge a partnership, build trust, build understanding. To inspire commitment, right? Motivate your, uh, your the person you're coaching or leading. Motivate them, build insight. Let them know that hey, it's not this. This is what you're going to be one day, and it's not only that. You will raise up other leaders, and people will, uh, you know, you you know, you will grow in your walk with God. You will grow as a leader. So you inspire them. Uh, for commitment and tell them to grow skills, build new competence and competencies, and to know that you know to ensure that they are growing. And, and this is very important. We never must stay stagnant, right? Build new competencies. It, it could be in practical ways, it could be in, in terms of learning new skills, uh, taking up maybe short term courses. Uh, now, build grow skills. Right. Uh, always encourage them uh, to do that. Then promote persistence. Uh, that is build stamina and discipline. Uh, now, persistence, right, is something very important, right? Especially as leaders, we need to 
you know, we need to tell people that leadership, it's not always, you know, when we look at it, sometimes people desire leadership because they're in a place where they can tell people what to do. And that's, that's a wrong understanding, right? You know, leadership involves responsibilities. There are lives that are being ministered to under your care. And there'll be times when, you know, you may just get tired, you may feel weak, you may fall, you may be tired. Uh, but here, we need to promote persistence, right? Build stamina, build discipline, and uh, uh, you know, for for them, uh, finally, shape the environment, build support, remove barriers, open doors. If you want, don't force. Very important. Don't force, control, or manipulate people. Nobody can force anybody to be someone they don't want to be. Have a, for example, you know, now uh, uh, during those days, parents would always say, Hey, I want my son to be a doctor, I want my son to be an engineer, and this son will be, you know, uh, interested in uh, learning music. And completely the opposite direction. Now, now, I remember, you know, they would, uh, there would be sometimes when uh, parents would force and say, well, How can you be playing these instruments? It's not going to get you anywhere. Uh, right? Uh, I'm talking about 10, 15 years before. Uh, uh, but nowadays, parents are more open. Parents are more, do what you want to do. Uh, because in every field, there's growth. And, and, and so, uh, even in terms of coaching people, right? Uh, don't force anybody. Because you, you can't shake somebody and say, hey, you should become a leader. Or you should become a cell group leader. If they are not for it, their heart is not in it. Don't push them into it. They should be ready. When they are ready, then you push them. Then you you, know, you gently, uh, you know, just release them and help them to do what they want, what they want to do. And don't manipulate, don't control, don't force them. That the last thing that we must do as leaders. Right now, finally, if you want to coach, be coachable. Right? There will be times. Uh, you know, when we are coaching people, we are training people, and sometimes, you know, they may come and say, hey, what you said last week, I didn't like the way you said it because the tone was very rude. And, you know, uh, and sometimes we may feel, oh, if, if, if it's, you know, I'm, I'm the one who's leading this, so, uh, you know, thank God we don't feel that way, but we may feel that way at times. How can this person tell us what to do? Really say, okay, if I was rude, I apologize, uh, ask forgiveness, and move on. But you don't have to forfeit your leadership just because of that one thing. Remember, we all make mistakes. Be coachable, be teachable. Right? Uh, you know, uh, agree for the mistakes you have made, ask for forgiveness, and move on. Right? So. Okay, uh, so if there's no questions, uh, we'll just close in prayer. So maybe one of us can please close. Maybe Prabhakar or Rupa, anybody can close in prayer. Yes, anyone. Uh, maybe say, go ahead. Let us pray. Our dear Father in heaven, we bless you for another class, Lord. And thank you, Lord, for your son. Thank you for how you have used him to instruct us and how you have used him to impact upon us um, what it means to be a leader and the expectations as a leader and what the things, what to do, things we should do and things we shouldn't be doing. We say thank you for this knowledge and we pray that, Lord, in every capacity you raise us, Lord, to become leaders, that, Lord, we will not fall short of all these things we have learned. And we pray that, Lord, you would also put in us, Lord, the ability and the grace to raise others in the way of Christ. And that, Lord, we would also be worthy examples as you, O oh Lord, in heaven, and as how you led um, the disciples and every other ones once you, when you're on earth. We pray, Father, Lord, for your son, who you've used to impact upon us this knowledge that, Lord, his leadership, Lord, will continue to be an example of Christ 
I will pray that in everything, Lord, you have raised him to do and in the future, the Lord, you will embrace him, Lord, to do more and more for your kingdom and for the progress of your church. We give you praise, Lord, as we go into the other class, we pray that, Lord, strengthen us and give us wisdom to understand all that we are taught. And we pray that all will be done to your glory. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are prayed. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Say. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Have a wonderful week. Uh, we'll see you next week. God bless.